In this video, I'm going to briefly explain how we can easily tell uh, whether or not a trig value or the value of a trig function will be positive or negative, depending upon what quadrant uh, its angle terminates in. Okay, uh, so recall that uh, when we de redefine the trig functions here, we say given some angle in standard position. Okay, so we say standard position means it leaves the positive x-axis and it terminates in some quadrant here. Uh, but we have some angle theta here. We could totally find all six trig functions of this so long as we know a point on the terminal side. So we say some x, y, because we can always drop down an altitude and create a right triangle situation out of this. And as a matter of fact, we would say, well, if I knew this point x, y, then we would know that the bottom part of this triangle here is exactly x units out to the right, and then the top part of this triangle, or this leg over here, would be y units up into this point. Uh, and then we define the distance here back to the origin here as always being this distance r. So uh, first thing I want to note here is this. We always assume that r is positive. And of course, we know this is true because, well, if x squared plus y squared equals r squared, then r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. But we're saying r is a distance, OK? So just as an assumption, we say r is always positive. But uh, here's the thing x and y need not always be positive, okay? Going into this definition of the trig functions, let's keep that in mind. So we say, well, if I wanted to find the sine of, say, this angle here, sine of theta, recall that the sine of theta would be the opposite side of this, you know, to this angle over the hypotenuse. And in this case, we say it'd be the y value of this point over the hypotenuse r. So we get y over r. And the thing I want to mention again is this, r has to be positive, but y doesn't necessarily have to be positive. So y could be negative. What this means is the overall value of sine can sometimes be negative. And we might ask ourselves this question, well, when would sine be negative if r is always positive? Sine would be negative if the y value of this point were negative, because a negative divided by a positive is a negative. Likewise, if we talk about cosine, cosine, of course, is adjacent over hypotenuse. In this case, we say the x value of this point right here, divided by r. So we say this is the definition of cosine, but we say r is always positive, of course. When would cosine be negative? Where would it have to be? Where would it have to terminate? Uh, well, it would have to have an x value here that is negative. So if the x value of this point were negative, then we'd have a negative divided by positive, and the cosine, the overall value of cosine would be negative. And last but not least, we'll just go ahead and talk about tangent here. We don't need to bring up the reciprocal functions, because let's face it, if sine were negative, then it's reciprocal, say, cosecant would also be negative. But we say tangent. Tangent is y over x by definition, or at least opposite to my angle over adjacent to my angle. So we say y over x. We say, well, when would this be positive or negative? Well, taking into account the fact that x and y, uh, they could either be positive or negative. We say, well, tangent would be positive if y and x have the same sign. Okay, so if, if x and y were both positive, it'd be a positive divided by a positive, it'd be positive. And if x and y were both negative, uh, you'd have a negative divided by a negative, which would be a positive, okay? Uh, so our effort here in this video is basically to come up with a really nifty way to determine, well, what uh, quadrants would my angle terminate in, and, and uh, how would that affect the sign of, of my trig values? And I've got a really nifty way of doing this. As a matter of fact, we could just sketch it out here. We say all students take calculus is is this just a this is just a mnemonic okay and so i don't really care that all students take calculus or not but we're looking at these capital letters here and so you'll see you know math teachers they say well draw this on your paper we say a s t c but what this stands for is that uh, all trig functions are positive in the first quadrant and the reason why is because if you're thinking about the first quadrant if i had an angle that terminated up here and i picked a point on the terminal side x and y are both positive in the first quadrant Okay, so if I were to say do y over r, x over r, even y divided by x, then I would always get positive values because x and y were positive, and of course r was positive. So let's talk about the implications of, of quadrant two. Uh, here we say this would be the sine. What this means is sine is the only positive trig function in this quadrant. I want to talk about why would this be true. You know, we could draw a rough sketch here. If I were to have an angle that, say, was in standard position, here's our angle in standard position, but terminated over here, I want to talk about this. Uh, if we drop this down, what I want you to notice is this. In terms of our sines, we would say x would be negative, but y would be positive x would be negative, y would be positive. So for instance, if we were to do sine, which of course is y over r, we'd say, oh, I'd have a positive y value. And y values are positive up in the second quadrant. And r is always positive, so we get a positive divided by a positive. This must mean that sine is positive in the second quadrant. But let's look at all other trig functions. For instance, if we did cosine in the second quadrant, 
then we would say we'd get x over r. x in this case, look at this, x is negative, but r is positive. So cosine would have to be negative over here. And likewise, if we did tangent, which is y over x, you would get a positive divided by a negative, which is also a negative. So this little mnemonic over here is really nifty at just saying which trig functions are positive and where. So for instance, down here we say tangent is the only positive trig function. Of course, if we were to sketch an angle that terminated down here, here's our angle, here's our point on the terminal side here. Okay, we say we have a negative y, x, and a negative y. So here's our angle here, theta. If our angle theta terminates in the third quadrant, we say, well, tangent would be the only thing that's positive because if tangent's y over x, I'd get a negative divided by a negative, which is a positive. But check this out. If I did y over r or x over r, or y or r is always positive, I'd get a negative y value divided by a positive r or a negative x value divided by a positive r. So tangent is the only trig function that's positive down here if it terminates in the third quadrant. And last but not least, if we had an angle that terminated in the fourth quadrant, here's our angle theta. Okay, so it terminates, it stops in the fourth quadrant. We say, well, here's our point, x, y. We could talk about this point, x, y. It's got a positive x value, but it simply has a negative y value. So we say, okay, well, then uh, thinking about this, we'd say, well, sine would be negative since I have a negative y. Cosine would be the only positive thing here. And then tangent, y divided by x or negative divided by a positive, that would also be negative, okay? So all students take calculus. It's just an easy way to determine whether or not your trig function's values would be positive or negative. So for instance, if I said, go find the cosine of an angle's theta. Oh, and by the way, theta is an element of quadrant three. Quadrant three. What this means is I've got an angle that terminated down here in quadrant three. I just wanna know, would the value of my cosine when I do find it here, should it be positive? or should it be negative? And so we could just go up here and say, well, if it terminates in the third quadrant, T, all students take calculus, T. Tangent's the only thing that's positive. So this right here, it would be negative if the angle terminates in the third quadrant. Cheers.